Hello everyone, today we're focusing on Cambridge IGCC Mathematics, topic of algebra, subtopic quadratic equations and inequalities. So we are looking at what is a quadratic inequality. So basically just like quadratic equations, quadratic inequalities basically have um, an extra term with a power of 2, right? So if there's a power of 2 and that is the highest power that there is in your particular expression, then it is a quadratic expression. And if it has anything with the greater than, less than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to symbols, then it becomes a quadratic inequality, okay? Uh, so going into um, quadratic equations, you need to know the methods of how to solve quadratic equations. And what you need to remember is that unlike linear equations, quadratic equations will give you two different solutions, right? So if you're getting um, one solution, that also could be because the same um, x value appears twice. But generally, you should get two x values or one x, x value appearing twice. Now let's look at um, the first method, which is the method of factorization. So under the factorization method, this is just using the factorization um, techniques that you learned in the previous class. So this would be x squared minus x minus six. So we're looking at factors that multiply to negative six. So that could be negative 3, positive 2, negative 2, positive 3. Um, we can even take a negative 6, positive 1 or 6 and negative 1, right? These are the factors. But then we have to see which of these factors is going to add together to give me negative 1 because that is the center I have. And when you look at that, the possible option that works is negative 3 plus 2. Hence, you can then write down your two brackets as x negative 3, x positive 2. And when you solve the two brackets, you get the x value as x is equal to 3 and x is equal to negative 2. So that is the steps by which you can solve a quadratic equation by factorization. Remember that sometimes the equation is not given in this form, in which case you might have to rearrange and bring all the terms to one side, make the other side equal to zero before you start solving um, your quadratic equation. So going forward, you may get expressions like this where you might not have the middle term. So for example, 16x squared negative 9 is equal to 0. So you don't have the center term. But that doesn't matter. You can still use the method of factorization. You should realize that this is square numbers. So 16 is a square number. 9 is a square number. We have a negative in between. And this is the kind of form, um, type of factorization we call as difference between between the two squares and that means if you square root 16 that is 4 square root 9 it is 3 and remember that you have to take one positive bracket one negative bracket and that will result in 4x plus 3 4x minus 3 as the two uh, multiplications equivalent to 0 and from here you can then equate it equal to 0 and rearrange to find out the final solution so in this case you can see that i'm getting x is equal to negative 3 quarter and x is equal to positive 3 quarter as my two solutions but this is also um, you can also solve this basically by algebraic manipulation so that is using this, so which is basically simply rearranging your formula. So you have taken the negative 9 over to the right hand side, divided by 16, and then you can square root it. But remember here that when you are square rooting, there is the possibility of getting a positive answer and a negative answer. So hence, you should be able to obtain two solutions regardless of which method you use. If you are unable to factorize or have a very complicated expression, then you might consider solving using the quadratic equation. So the quadratic equation is this basically x equals negative b plus minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. That is the formula. And what you have to do is first you have to take your particular expression and make sure that it is in the ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero form. 
it is a must that it has to be in that form so if you have it equal to some number then you have to bring that number to the left hand side and to the right hand side or the left hand side making sure that all the terms are on one side of the equation and making it equal to zero before you start figuring out what is the value of a what is the value of b and what is the value of c if you do it before that you are going to get incorrect solutions so from here after that what you need to do is you need to look at what is the coefficient of x squared that will be a so that is a is equal to 24 if you look at what is the coefficient of x that is negative 22 and the constant value is negative 35 now make sure that when you're taking the values for a b and c you take care of the sign as well so if there is a negative in front of it you have to take that as part of your a b or c value so once you have obtained this it's basically a careful substitution into the formula so that is now instead of b i'm putting in negative 22 instead of c i'm putting negative 35 and instead of a i'm substituting 24 and once that's done uh, be sure to simplify the first number carefully uh, 20 negative 22 squared you can find out the value 4 times 24 times 35 find out the value and then you can simplify the addition or subtraction of those two which gives me 3844 in this case after that you need to understand that you will get two solutions one with the plus and one with the minus that is how you will get two different solutions here so after that you can use the help of your calculator to figure out what is the final answer generally you should give it to at least two decimal places or three significant figures to finish right so we're going to finish off with some questions so x squared negative 5x is equal to 3x negative 15 so remember what I said before you solve any quadratic equation it is a must that you move all the terms onto one side so I'm going to move my um, 3x and my 15 to the other side of this expression here so that is how I'm going to start so this then becomes x squared negative 8x plus 15 is equal to 0 and from here I can then look at my op options for factorizing this right so to factorize this i need to find factors of 15 positive 15 so if you think about it that's 1 and 15 2 doesn't go and then i have 3 and 5 i'm going to stop there because if you look at the center it's a negative 8 so i think 3 and 5 can get me that but rather than taking two positive numbers i'm going to take the two negative ones as my factors because i need a negative 8 here so when i factor it's going to be x negative 3 x negative 5 equal to 0 and if i solve my individual um, solutions this is going to be x e equal to 3 and x negative 5 equal to 0 will give me x is equal to 5. So therefore the solution is basically 3 and 5 and if we move down I think that is the last option here. Alright so moving on to the next question. Again another uh, factorization which involves you moving everything to your left hand side. So x squared I'm going to do it in one go this time plus 9x plus um, take away 8x so that's going to be plus x here plus 2 but then I'm going to have negative 58 so that's basically negative 56 um, and that's going to be equal to 0. Again I need to find factors which will um, multiply to 56 so the one I'm e easily going to think of uh, the most common one is going to be negative 8 and 7 or negative 7 and 8 looking at my center because this is positive x i am going to go for um, the 8 and negative 7 option so that is x plus 8 and x is negative 7 is equal to 0 and from this my two solutions will be x is negative 8 and x is 7 which is basically the opposite signed version and again this is option number 4 all right and uh, last question so x minus 5 squared is equal to 16 so there's actually two different ways you can solve it but i think i'll uh, teach you which is the most optimal way here 
so to get rid of the square on the left hand side you have to take a square root to the right hand side but when you do that you must remember that there are two answers a positive and a negative square root so when i do that my answer becomes x negative 5 is plus or minus 4 so therefore x is equal to 5 plus or minus 4 so x is equal to 9 or 1 and that brings us to the end of this lesson subscribe us now for more videos and content